Hi and welcome to the second of my videos about understanding poetry. Now this video is going to focus on the poem Walnut Tree Forge by John Tripp. If you haven't done so, it's worth looking back uh, to my part one video, which is based on structure, so that I don't have to cover all ground. I'd also like you to look at the slide which has the acrostic I strip to, which gives you a structure for analysing poetry. Now, you may feel that you can do this spontaneously. Well, that's all well and good, but it is going to help, I think, many students who sit there in the exam and write very little. And at the very least, it could act as a kind of checklist to prompt you, have you talked about certain things? The next video will focus on the poem that we're going to compare the walnut tree to and that is The Cathedral Builders by John Ormond. So you may like to have a look at this in your own time uh, before that third video. In the third video, if I can, if not it's going to run to a fourth, is I will then compare these two poems in some detail. I'm going to begin with uh, a, a starter and just take four lines from the poem and it's uh, these four lines focus on the image of the kingfisher which seems to be one of the central ideas in the in the poem. Now the kingfisher is seen by both the child and the father as the father about halfway through the poem asks the child did you see the kingfisher and the child not. But there is, these, uh, the, there is these lines which focus on the uh, simile of the kingfisher hunting. Let me read them to you first. I saw a kingfisher dive like a blue-green streak, clean through the water and out again with lunch in its beak. Now of course the kingfisher is seen from the uh, child's point of view. Uh, but we must bear in mind, of course, as well, is that the poem is looking back nostalgic, nostalgically at uh, what looks like a uh, summer holiday. And the uh, child um, is looking at the kingfisher, spearing the fish, taking the fish back to its nest in the hole in the bank. Now it's described as a blue-green streak which of course, uh, it's not good enough in an exam to say, oh, look, it's, it, this is a simile and then quote the simile. You must comment on the effect. Well, the child doesn't get a clear, detailed image of the kingfisher in its movement towards catching the fish because it's going so fast. So the simile expresses speed. It's just like a flash of Color. The speed of the kingfisher is expressed in, in the simile uh, like a blue-green streak. Now many candidates just make the mistake of quoting the simile and not really commenting on its effect in detail. We can see from the blue-green streak is that the child is not giving us a picture, detailed picture, but is just recording the event at the time which gives us a sense of realism. It feels just like a flash of colour. The speed, of course, is reinforced by the use of many monosyllabic words, like one-sounding words, I mean. Also, there's the use of enjambment, where the uh, one line runs into the other, which increases the fluency. So, at the end of this uh, snapshot, if you like, that's kind of marked by that internal rhyme, is we get, or we are left with anyway, a very clear idea of the movements, the routine movements of this kingfisher. The idea of routine, of course, connects with the child's father, the farrier who shoes horses, shire horses. Each day the horses come 
and each day um, it seems uh, an arduous task is for him to eschew these huge beasts. The idea of course as well may be used to contrast with the Shire horse um, as it seems the Shire horse has lost that routine uh, that he once was accustomed to in days gone by uh, of working close to nature with man pulling the plough or doing other farming duties. Next is a model uh, paragraph about the Kingfisher which uh, to get the A star what I'd like you to do is expand upon that paragraph and try and connect the fisher of the Kingfisher to some of the other ideas which are very similar in the poem. Walnut Tree Forge by John Tripp My father shod horses in the sun while I threw old shoes at an iron pin. From the bank of the canal I saw a kingfisher dive like a blue-green streak, clean through the water and out again with its lunch in its beak, then glide to its fish-boned hole in the bank. My father would look up from his work and lean against the door to rest from the bending, the weight on his back of a shire, big and restless in the heat that tested all his muscles and skill. He would wipe his brow with a rag. Did you see a kingfisher then? I nodded. He never welcomed the big horses made for show, all rump and heavy with the spoilt pride of their runners, shone to a tantrum and cockade gloss for anything but work. These gave him a rough hour of shifting and fret, too pampered by the hands of others. It was labour to him, one more task for a pound, the ponies coming in a string on a good day. To me it was freedom from arithmetic, as golden time used up so easily. There were just the two of us, the ring of the shoes hitting the pin, and a kingfisher and a shire in the long ago sun. Hi, if you haven't written many notes, hopefully this next discussion will make your notes more extensive and be ready for that uh, eventual comparison. Now, uh, to begin with, you may want to look closely at, at the title, Walnut Tree Forge, which gives you an indication often of what the poem is going to be about. Well, uh, the forge is the place of a blacksmith or farrier. Uh, walnut tree, well, it gives that impression that the poem is going to be about country life, rural life, and of course uh, it is. Well, uh, what is it about? Well, you may uh, mention that it is autobiographical, it's written from a child's point of view, and it seems that uh, there are uh, central images, uh, one of the kingfisher, one of his father, we get an impression of the child and also the interaction between father and child. Now, you would only need to say uh, basic things about the poem. You can expand on those much later with PQA's point quote analysis. The poem is organised into four septets, which means the verses are seven lines each. Now this is perhaps unusually heavy, and what it may express, of course, is the heaviness of the blacksmith's blacksmith jobs. The arduous task itself of lifting uh, the leg of these horses, these heavy horses, but also their tools like the anvil. Now, the, the poem uh, seems to me also, uh, being in four verses, it seems to express three or four ideas. Maybe the central ideas, uh, such as the kingfisher, 
uh, the father, the child, and also the relationship uh, between nature, uh, nature and man. You probably also noticed is that if we look at the structure of uh, the lines themselves as well, the lines are of fairly equal uh, length. The poem does not rhyme and it resembles something more like prose. Now that's not to say that it doesn't have rhythm because it does, because the rhythm is created is through the sounds of the words uh, themselves and also the wonderful use of punctuation. We've commented already how it, it, punctuation can create speed, but also is I'd like you is to look at the last verse, and in particular the last couple of lines where Seishura is used. Seishura is using punctuation to create pauses. And of course it slows in that last verse. And it kind of creates or, in, or evokes uh, uh, a sadness, if you like, or perhaps that close relationship between uh, nature and man has faded and uh, perhaps lost. Through the adult's eyes we see the child and they're looking back of course into, into the past and it's summer holidays and the child seems to be uh, away from school and away from those routines like uh, arithmetic and is enjoying him or herself uh, playing horseshoes, getting the uh, horseshoes as close to the stake as possible. The child too, of course, is enjoying the relationship with the father. Uh, that uh, the, uh, the bond seems to be emphasised when they both notice the beauty of the kingfisher and uh, its, its movements. The father, like the kingfisher, is earning his pound uh, for their lunch. But there seems to be something wrong as he is working with the, the shire horse. Yes, he's, he's working close to nature. But the problem is the shire horse. Uh, the shire horse it was known uh, as a horse that worked closely with the farmer in the fields and doing duties such as ploughing. It was known as a placid, beautiful, strong type of horse. Well, it gives us an image that it's still a large beast. Um, but its temperament has changed. Now it's changed uh, according to the poem because it's become a show horse. It's become like a petulant child, which is indicated through the word tantrum. It's become a, a show horse that has been brushed and groomed and run by its owners to show the horse and them off. There's a sense of pride about that and not a sense of the animal uh, being close to nature and it has lost its relationship with nature. Uh, for the father of course is its money and um, but there is a sense of regret is that this relationship has changed. The mood of course is a nostalgic one. The writer describes this time as a golden one. Uh, golden I guess because uh, of that relationship that uh, he or she had with, uh, with the father and also golden perhaps because of their closeness to nature despite the fact that we sense that maybe things are, are changing. And that brings us to the end of the poem where there is a, a kind of pensive sense of sadness that with the shy horse things are changing and perhaps we sense that distance now between the, the adult and child that, that things have changed enormously since then. In your conclusion, of course, you have to compare the two poems, but I would be saying about uh, Walnut Tree Forge that uh, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I liked the, the images that was presented in the poem 
I also like the deeper underlying uh, theme, if you like, of discussing nature uh, and what is natural and what is unnatural. I also like the organisation of it and the, the vocabulary. It seemed to be fairly simple, uh, almost like prose that depicts the simplicity, if you like, of this golden bygone age. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us the thumbs up. You may want to uh, look forward to the part three uh, and maybe part four, seeing how the time goes. I'm also releasing at the end of the week is more videos on of mice and men. And in particular, I'm going to concentrate on the character of a George. I've already talked about Lenny. I'm also going to talk about the relationship between the two, which is a frequent question that comes up in the exam.